Woodlawn Cemetery in Nashua, New Hampshire, situated between East and West Hollis Streets, was created from land sold to the city of Nashua in 1848. Land continued to be added to the cemetery, and it grew to be just under 40 acres. In 1895, it had around 12,000 graves, including the remains transferred from the Spring Street Cemetery when it was closed in 1872. In 2022, there were just under 19,000 known graves. The city's burial database is not complete, as many of the pre-1895 records are missing. Some headstones are not included in that database. Thanks to the volunteers with Find a Grave and Billion Graves, they are being documented. Pick any grave, and there's a story to tell. The son of Granville Wood and Lodoska Cummings was born in 1867 in Nashua, New Hampshire. He lived 30 minutes before dying of cyanosis, which refers to a bluish skin resulting from poor circulation or inadequate oxygenation of the blood. The child was not given a name, and the stone states he was the only son of G.P. and L.K. Wood. On the birth record, his parents were Granville P. and Lodowski Wood, and their gravestones are about four feet away. Lodowska was about 38 years old when her son was born. Women at this time stopped having children around age 40, so it was no surprise that this child was her last. He was also her second child, her first child having been born seven years earlier. Granville and Lodowska married in Nashua in 1859. Granville was 26 years old and Lodowska was 30. It was the first marriage for both of them. In 1855, Granville had been living in Lowell working as a butcher, and in 1860, he was in Nashua working as a butcher. Perhaps Lodowska met him when she was shopping. Their first child, Hattie, was born in 1860 in Nashua, New Hampshire. As the years passed, they probably didn't expect to have any more children, so they were probably tentatively joyful when Lodowska conceived in 1866 at age 38 and the pregnancy progressed successfully. At that age, a great many things could go wrong. They hadn't chosen a name for the child, or if they had, they didn't give it to him. Perhaps they thought Ladoska would conceive again. Consumption, the common name for tuberculosis, was responsible for about one quarter of the deaths in New England until antibiotics became available in the mid-1940s. Hattie died of TB just shy of her 18th birthday. Most patients lingered for two to five years. The young woman, pale and thin with skin glowing from fever, was considered beautiful. Granville and Ladoska probably were not thinking their only child looked beautiful. They probably looked at her as she wasted away with broken hearts knowing they would never see her fall in love, never see her as a happy bride or a loving mother with children of her own. When they buried her, they also buried any hope of sharing their love with grandchildren. There were no nursing homes. Family was expected to take care of the elderly. Living with a child or grandchild would be easier than living with a grandniece or grandnephew. A hidden question in Granville and Ladoska's hearts was probably what will happen when we get old. Ladoska's parents were still living on their own at ages 74 and 78, so the family had probably had conversations about what to do when mom and dad would not be able to care for themselves or when they died. Dad, Moses Cummings, died of paralysis in Dedham, Massachusetts in 1880. There are many causes of paralysis, but the most likely cause in this case was a stroke. None of his children were living in Dedham, and the decision was made to bury him in the Wood family plot in Nashua, New Hampshire, near Hattie and her infant brother. After her husband's death, Sally Cummings most likely moved to Tisbury, Massachusetts to live with her son Augustus Cummings, where she had died at the age of 90. She was buried with her husband in the Wood family plot in Nashua, New Hampshire. Granville Wood ran a provision shop on the corner of East Pearl and Spring Streets. He and Ladowska lived at 32 Franklin Street, which is now a parking lot. Granville died in 1887 of paralysis in Nashua, New Hampshire. The now widowed Ladoska was alone with the exception of her brother Augustus. As a widow, her choices for support were limited. She could live off of the money her husband left her, if any, live with her brother or other relative, find another husband, or at age 58 engage in one of the acceptable women's jobs, teacher, dressmaker, laundress, housekeeper, factory worker, or domestic servant. Ladoska chose dressmaker and operated her shop out of her home at 20 Granite Street. 
About February 1904, she fractured her hip and arm. It could have been caused by osteoporosis, but it was February and could have also been from a fall on the ice. She was taken to the hospital where she remained for three months before dying of her injuries at age 75. On May 7, 1904, she was buried with her family.